Hosea, chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to finish chapter 5 today. I don't know what we'll do after that. Yar, the yar. And he saw Ephraim, he saw his holy. What is holy? Kosik. Remember those two guys in Ruth? Mahlon. His name is Mahlon. His name means sick. They were born during the famine. She thought they were going to die. Ephraim can see his sickness. And Yehuda, in parallel, sees his mazor. So you see the mazor that's at the end of the verse. And this mazor. We've been talking about Zara. Remember Zara? Strange. Okay, so it is related to this root, Zor, which can also be a stranger. It comes from the idea of turning away, turning, of, yes, of sewer, yes. Okay, so they're uh, um, cognates. But in this case, it has to do with the wound, because what happens to a wound, you wind a bandage around it. You go around and around. Yeah, well, isn't that English? That's English. They wound the bandage around the wound. Ephraim can see his sickness, and Judah can see his, his wound. So actually, the very root idea of Zur is a circle. And so we're going to go to Shmuel Bet, Kaf Bet, Pasuk Arbaim. So you have Chayal, Chayal, kind of a broad word. The so Chayal in modern Hebrew is a soldier. You have men who are a Gibor Chayal, for example. Uh, Boaz is a Gibor Chayel, uh, so it can have also to do with wealth or strength, like not only physical strength, but financial strength. And then you also have the Eshet Chayel. Where is the Eshet Chayel? Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. And how is that translated? A virtuous woman, a woman of valor. Okay, so it has a kind of a broad meaning here. So this is here, it's kind of strength. See that um, he's wrapping him, I mean, the the author, who I assume is David, is uh, praying to Yahweh, he says, he's wrapping me up, like, with strength for milchama. Tachria has to do with bending of the knee. In other words, he's forcing to subdue. Kamai is from kum. Those who stand against me is the idea. Kamai, those who are standing up or raised up against me. And they are Tachteni, underneath me. He's, he has, um, he has, he's praising Yahweh. He's saying, this is what you've done. You have uh, armed me with strength for war, and you have subdued those who stood up against me, like underneath my feet. Let's look at Shemot, Lamed, Pasuk Arba. So it's talking about building the altar. But you see the same thing also for the incense altar and, uh, and the table of showbread. They all have a zer. Shtei tibaot zahav. Two tibaah is a ring. What are the rings made of? Gold. Two golden rings. Ta'ase lo. Make for him. What's the him? The altar. Good. Mitachat. It's gonna. They're gonna go underneath the zero. So his his zer. So it's um. Sometimes it's translated just as molding, but sometimes it's translated as crown. So this is the zayr. So sometimes it's like a crown or a molding. But the point is it goes all the way around. So underneath his molding, I'll stay under his ribs, his two sides. Ta'ase al shnei tzidav. Ta'ase. Everybody knows ta'ase. Yeah, as a make on his two sides. make for his two sides. Bahaya. Levatim, levadim. So they will be for the um, the the houses, the beitim, right there. The houses for the poles. They're the holders for the poles that are going to run through on either side. That they're going to carry them, whether it's on the right side or the left side or lengthwise. We're not even talk about that. These are where the poles are, so that you can set. It. What is it set? Nasa carry. to carry. You can carry him by these poles. But what we're talking about is the Zayr, the Zar thing that goes all the way around. Um, all right, we're in Hosea 5.13. Uh, and we're talking about Mizoro. Okay, so anything Zar, either it's going to be strained, or it's going to be round, or it's going to be round in the sense of turning away from, that's what makes it strange. Strangers are like walking away. They're turning okay. away. 
Vayelech, and he went Ephraim el Ashur to Assyria, which is sort of where Babylon was. Vayishlach, and he sent to Melech Yerav. He sent to the Yerav is the Melech's name. He sent to the king of Assyria. Okay, he said, "Whoa." I'm weak, I'm failing, I'm not doing well, I'm wounded. I'm going to go to Assyria, see if they can help me. Veholo yuchal. He was not able, lirpo lachem, to, to heal him, to doctor him. Velo yeh So this is kind of a funny word, um, gehe, and it also means to heal or cure. We'll look in Mishle, suk esrim vishdayim. Everybody knows this verse. I think this might be the only other place that this root is used. It's Lev Sameach. A happy heart. Ye tev, like tov. Does good. What, and you know the verse. A happy, merry heart do it good like a medicine. There, it has to do with curing. However, on the other hand, Ruach Nechaya, weak or broken, broken spirit. Tiyabesh, Yavash, drives, and garm. So garm is not the normal word for bones. Okay, but we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on Hosea 5.13. So again, this is in parallel. Here is the king, the, the Melech of Ashur, and they go to him for help, and he cannot heal them, and he cannot cure them of this mazor, of this wound. 514. Ki Anuchi. I am Ke So Ashachel is a lion. Can you imagine? We have a lot of lion words. There are two in the verse. We talked about the young lion last time, the kafir, uh, which is a young lion. And what else do you know for lion? Ari, Arye? Yes, Lavi. Ari or Arye is the full form. Female lion is Levi. It must be Levi, yeah. Shacha. I am like a lion to Ephraim and a kafir um, to the house of Judah. And then he says, Ani, Ani. And then, even more than that, is the Aleph prefix for I will do something. He's very serious about that he's going to do it. Tara, shredded. Torn. When they talk about something being torn by wild beasts and you're not allowed to eat it, it's tara. So this word moved into Yiddish as treif, um, and it means everything <laughs> which is not kosher is treif. So even though your lobsters are not shredded, they're still considered to be treif because they're not kosher. The point is that treif comes from this word for torn, but the meaning of it is expanded to mean everything which is not kosher. Things which are torn are not kosher, but other things uh, are, called, are considered to be trick. He's going to tear them up. The elech, the esa, the ein matzil, and there will be no one to save. What's the root for matzil? Natsal. <laughs> so it appears yeah. in the he field. How do you say if you're drowning? What do you say? Hatzilu, Hatzilu. So what is this uh, lift up? What is this I will I will lift up? No, I will carry. Where is he going to carry them? Where are they going? Syria. They're going to exile. He's going to lift and carry them away. I'm going to tear them up, and I'm going to come and I'm going to carry them away, and no one will save them. There will not be anyone to help. I think he's about had enough. 5.15. Elech, I will go. Ashuva. I will surely return. What is the hay doing there? So you have this hay suffix. If it's on a noun, then it's directional. Is this a noun? No, it's on a verb. So what does that make it? Well, it's injunctive. Actually, there are three different names for it. Cohortative and I don't know. I can't even remember what the third one is. It's they, I don't know why they have three different names, but there's one for the first person, one for the second person, one for the third person. I want to just interrupt the class here to straighten this out. I've been teaching that all these verbs that end in hey are called injunctive verbs. And I have come across in uh, studying different Hebrew grammar books the forms which are called cohortative and jessive. 
looked in all the traditional Hebrew grammar books that I have, I don't see any sign of injunctive. I did take Hebrew in college. It was a very long time ago. And if I tell you that it was the C's, maybe you can understand that I wasn't paying very much attention. So I don't really remember what I learned when I was in college concerning this. I do have one Hebrew grammar, which is actually from an Israeli. Uh, it's called a textbook of Israeli Hebrew with an introduction to the classical language by M. Rosen. It is published by the University of Chicago Press, but he is clearly an Israeli and he takes an Israeli view. And so I think that is where I have this term injunctive from. And he cites both uh, first person and second person in these forms. The problem with Hebrew grammar, the, the old grammars, is that they, instead of trying to find an organic shape for the language, they tried to fit the language into languages that they had already formulated grammars for, such as Greek and Latin. So many times they try to impose forms that appear in Greek and Latin onto the Hebrew when they don't really appear in the Hebrew. You will find the hey on both first, second, on first, second, and third person verbs. Uh, they, they're, these forms, volitional forms, or uh, that indicate will surely do this, or he will surely do it, or let him do it. There are other forms besides ed is hey suffix, but the hey suffix is always interpreted as no matter what you call it. I don't know if any of that explanation makes it any clearer. Uh, here are some examples of, of the hey appearing in, in this person for the same meaning. We are looking at Bereshit, chapter 14, verse 21. And we're looking at the word here, ten, which means give. It's a command form. Vayomer Melech Sodom, and the king of Sodom said, El Avram, to Abraham, ten li hanefesh, give me the souls. Baharechush kachlach, take for yourself. The wealth, take for yourself. So it's a command form, you give me. And we just see the two letters, ten. In the second example, we're also in Genesis, Breshit, chapter 30, verse 26. And the opening word there is tana. So it's that ten with that hey suffix. Uh, Jacob is speaking, tana et nashai viet yiladai, give me my wives and my children, asher avadati otcha bahen, which I worked for you for them, ve'elecha, here we have a first person, I will surely go. It's got that hey suffix on it. Kiataya data et avodati, you know the work which I uh, that I did, a share avadaticha, which I did for you. So it's the same command form, give me, but it has this extra hey suffix, surely give me. Okay, we'll return back to the classroom. But that's the idea. I will definitely return. Where is he returning to? Mikomi. I'm going to return to my place, odd, until that yeshmu. Yeshmu. You just have to make a little hiccup in your throat. Yeshmu. Yeshmu. What's the root? Asham. We talked about it. It's almost a cognate. What is it? Guilt. Okay, it's like shame. Until they're sufficiently ashamed, till they confess, they acknowledge that they're guilty. And what will they do when they acknowledge that they're guilty? Vikshu panai, seek my face. Levakesh, what is levakesh? To look for something, to ask for something, request. Bevakasha, by way of request. They will seek my face when batsar lahem. And they're in what? Trouble? In their trouble, affliction, not plague. No, no. no tsar, what is the, the root meaning of tsar? A rock and a hard place. It's a tight place. That's right. It's a tight place, right? Remember the tzur is the rock. And then, in the midst of their affliction and troubles, yeshacharenini. So what is the root of that? Shachar. Who knows shachar? Shachar is actually a common uh, name for men. I'm not sure about women. Shachar is dawn. Okay, these people, they're going to realize that they're guilty 
they're going to call out, they're going to seek his face, and they're going in the midst of their affliction, and they will seek me early, they will seek me uh, earnestly. Okay, now we're just going to wing it, chapter 6. So you know that there's no, um, there's no chapter spaces or anything in all this. You can really see the repetition of the ideas right here and the poetry, right? God just says, Ashuva, I'm, I'm returning. And now, uh, whoever it is who's speaking of the repentant people, they're like, Lechu v'nashuva, come and who's returning? Nashuva, us. us. Okay, we will return. And it's got that same injunctive hey on it. We will return to Yahweh. Why? Ki hu tarah. Remember, we were just talking about the tarah. Okay. He has torn, but, and he will rafeh. He will heal us. You all know this. Now, here's a horrible yach. What's the root of yach? Because the yud is he will. It's a one-letter root. It's not a one-letter root. Okay, we have three or four of these things where it's a uh, drop letter imperfect, nun, and then it's in the um, converse of uh, the third person masculine singular, which loses its hay, right? Like before we had v'yar, right? This comes from ra'ah, to see, right? Ra'ah comes from to see. And in these reverse vobs, they lose their hay. So this is a drop letter imperfect, and it's in the reverse. So all you have is yeah, and smiting because what is the what is your what is the cough? This is a cough, right? Okay, you're gonna cough somebody. In fact, we have we have a uh, an English you cuff, you cuff them. right fisty cuffs, right? Ah. To cuff somebody, it's a uh, it's a cognate. The he will smite us. He has smitten us, but he will chabesh. So chabesh is another one of these uh, binding, winding, oh, winding up wounds. He will smite us, he's smitten us, but he will bind up our wounds. Yechayenu, chaya. So what does it mean? Huh? Living. Okay. He will cause us to live. When? Yomayim. So I love this ending, this I am ending. It's not im, it's I am, and it's dual, right? How do you say two weeks? Shivuayim, shivuayim. How do you say two months? Chodshayim. How do you say two years? Shnatayim, you need a tav in there because it's shana. Shnatayim, two weeks, two two years. Okay, all right. So he will he will revive us. He will cause us to live in the second day. The Yom Hashlishi, third day. Yekimenu from Kum. He will raise us up. The Nichia, who is this for? We, we will live lefanav in his face. Okay, we will live in his sight. Before him. Uh, verse Neda. We will know the near defa. Radaf. Remember Radaf? Sit it down and tackle it. Lada'at. To know. Okay, come let us learn. Come let us chase down and tackle the knowledge of Yahweh. Kashachar. Here's your shachar. And the dawn. Okay, nachon. Nachon. La nachon. The root is a kun. Uh, also established. So the idea of nachon being correct is more like it's correct because it's been established. It's something that is established, okay? This is where your word yes comes from. At the dawn is established what? Motza'o. He's going out. Yes, good. He's going out as certain as the dawn. He's definitely going to be there. Vayavo, and he is coming. Kageshem. Geshem? Rain. Lanu, for us. His coming is like rain for us. How is his coming like rain for us? Refreshing. That's exactly right. So all these sad things have happened, and he's chewing them out, and he's been giving them grief, and he's sending them off to uh, to exile. And then somebody comes to their right mind and says, "Hey, let's go seek the Lord." <laughs> and when we do that, it'll be so refreshing for us. It's better than being torn up. Yeah, we've been torn up, but he's bound us up. And he, you know, and not, not tied us up, but <laughs> he's bandaged us up, okay? And if we go seek him, it will be refreshing, okay? So there's two kinds of rain here, malkosh and yoreh. So what is the root of, this is very interesting. So what is the root of yoreh, yara? Which, what is yara? Which one is it? To shoot the arrow, right. And so we associate that with ohara. The yoreh 
it has, it's casting force. So you can understand how like rain is like casting force in the sky. That, that's becoming the fan. This is the early rain. When is the early rain? Right about now. Okay. <laughs> Back in the shakha. This is a fall. This is a fall rain. Why does it, what does the early rain do? It plows up the ground, makes the ground soft. Actually, from ha- the word for harvest, this is the latter rain. It comes in the spring, and it fills out the fruit and the wheat and things. It fills all the fruit up, whatever they are. The water fills it up, and then it's ready for harvest. And I just think it's very interesting that the early rain, the first rain, is a teaching rain. Before we can harvest anything, before we can harvest a harvest of souls, we have to go out, cast forth the Torah, teach people. Not everybody will come. You may have noticed that. <laughs> okay, not everybody will come. But then later, the rain comes, and it's time for the harvest, the latter rain. Verse 4. You can understand, what am I going to do with you, Ephraim? What am I going to do with you, Judah? Okay, what is chesed? Loving kindness. Your loving kindness is like anan. Do we know anan? Keshet anan. Anan is a cloud. What is the keshet anan? The rainbow. It's the bow in the clouds. Because otherwise a keshet is archery bow. Uh, you're like a cloud in the morning. What happens when the sun comes out? It burns the mist off, right? Then there is no more cloud. And you are also like tall dew. Yep. This is also a popular name for your daughter. <laughs> tall, and it's, and it's very funny because where does the dew actually really come from? The ground. It comes up from the ground. But that's not how it's perceived or spoken about. It's perceived like it comes down. Yeah. And this is where your word tali comes from, right? Because it's the thing that comes down and covers you. Your, your loving kindness is like cloud in the morning. And like dew, do you remember this? It has to do with getting up early, right? You check them. And it, it leaves early. It gets up and it goes away. Chesed. Chesed is covenant loving kindness. Okay? It's bad if you're, if you're covenant, something that gets up and goes away every morning. Okay? That's not any kind of... Um, Real covenant. It means they're still in trouble. Okay. Go away. What yeah. am I going to do with I, you? All right. All right. All right. Verse five. But aren't you excited? You know, almost. You can almost read this, right? There's not almost no words that you don't really know. Okay. Therefore, chetzav. I think we don't really know. Chetzav <coughs> is to hew out as a well. So I think that it's not like digging. You're not putting a shovel in the dirt. What is he going to hew them out with? with his prophets. The, prophets. the prophets. So what does that mean? He's trying to get through to them. He's picking at them. So I'm going to keep chiseling at you. I'm sending my prophets. They're, going to, they're trying to get, uh, to get the rocks out of the way. Haragti. Harag. Till. Haragti. Mm. What's the M at the end? Them. Haragti. I killed them. The Imre Fi. You know this? With the words of my mouth. Okay. When you comes in the sky... In Revelation 19, with the sword of his mouth, that's not a new idea. God says, I'm already do- I'm doing that. He's been doing that at least since Hosea, but maybe before that. Okay, I'm going to kill them. I've killed them with my words. Mishpatecha, your judgments or light. Light, say. Uh-huh, Aha, your judgments are going to be like light. Uh, when light comes into the darkness, you can't stop it. You can put, put up a sign and say, no. But if it's pitch black and you light a match, here comes the light. Okay, it just comes and it takes over. And so that's what their judgments are going to do. It's coming. So we had a nice few verses where they repented. They repented for like three verses. <laughs> and now it's going back downhill. All right, we'll do one more because we know it. Chesed. This, this covenant, chefatzti, to desire, v'lozeva, and not sacrifice. Okay, you know mizbeach, mizbeach comes from zeva. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And what else? Da'at? Not Elohim. Okay, so the may there is a comparative, more than. And what is the olot? The burnt offering. And you know this verse, right? I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God, more than, that's just just the mem, more than burnt offering. Please try and learn a little Hebrew while we're gone. Okay, come back after Thanksgiving. We'll be back after Thanksgiving.